The impacts of climate change are now impossible to ignore. But are there places that are immune, or that climate change might even make nicer? Some experts say one of those places could be Duluth, Minnesota. But what's so special about this small Midwestern city? And is it in fact climate proof? The key to Duluth's climate resilience is also the thing that makes it a very cold place. Lake Superior. It's the coldest and the deepest of all the Great Lakes. And it's also the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area. And that surface area is what's really super impactful to weather. And so when we think about just the mass quantity of water, the mass quantity of space that it takes up, it's just on a completely different scale. And because of that, it has that much larger of an influence. One of the biggest impacts that it's gonna have is on temperature. Here in the summer, Lake Superior acts like a big air conditioner, essentially. I think anybody who's been to Duluth in the, in the summer is used to the idea that you might have some really glorious days and then the next day is really chilly. And it's simply because we have this big reservoir of cold sitting right there. And if the wind comes off the lake, you're going to be experiencing some of that cold. The reason that that's interesting is because the lake tends to lag. Even though summer conditions have reached us, the lake might not have reached summer yet. And that is largely due to the heat capacity of water versus air. And a way to think about heat capacity is kind of as memory. So air has a shorter term memory or a smaller heat capacity, and it can warm up pretty quick and it can cool down pretty quick. Versus water, it takes longer to warm up as well as to cool down. Lake Superior is a remarkably cold lake. First of all, it's actually a lot further north and sits in a much colder climate than the other Great Lakes. The other really important aspect is that it's just really deep. As a counterexample, Lake Erie is also a large lake, but relatively shallow compared to Lake Superior, almost 10 times shallower, or one-tenth as deep. In that case, the water temperatures basically keep up with air temperatures and you don't end up with those super cold winds blowing off of Erie in the middle of July or something like that. But even though Lake Superior makes Duluth more resilient as global temperature changes, it isn't immune to the effects. The proof is in the data. What we see are trends towards warmer summers. The lakes are four to five degrees Fahrenheit warmer now in the summer than they were 40 years ago. And a lot of that is driven by the fact that we are having much milder winters, which means less ice. A lot of work that I've done in the past has suggested that ice cover in the winter is a very strong predictor of what happens the following summer, as much as whether we're having a warm or a cold summer. And so it's a combination of milder winters and warmer summers that are causing lake temperatures to be measurably and statistically warmer now than they were 40 years ago. More ice and colder water mean a colder summer. Less ice will be followed by a warmer summer. Lake Superior is one of the fastest warming lakes on Earth. We continue to see a decline in ice cover every single year with fairly large variations, but still a decline overall. And those have huge ramifications, warming us up, warming the lakes up as well, and how that influences the whole hydrometeorological cycle that we have come to depend on. We saw just last summer that we can fall into pretty serious drought in northern Minnesota and we can be impacted by wildfires that, you know, burn up and they affect our air quality and they affect um, our quality of life as well. And there's absolutely no reason to think that Duluth will not be impacted by climate change. But even if Duluth does see higher temperatures, there's one thing that is not likely to change. I think perhaps the more important aspect of Duluth as a climate refuge is the fact that we have abundant water. We're sitting on 10% of the world's fresh water right here. Water scarcity is not the same kind of issue here as it is in, for instance, the American Southwest. 